Hey, good afternoon, everyone. It is Wednesday, April 15th, and that means we are looking at the Pioneer and Modern preliminary results over the last week. So let's just dig right into it. This is the last full week of preliminary results before Ikoria goes live on Magic Online. So I added a little bit at the end, kind of looking back at what we've seen over these last five weeks and, and what the overall metagame has looked like for these formats taken as a whole over this time period. And of course, everything's going to change with Ikoria coming out. So what I'm going to do is not do this particular video next week, build up a little bit of results for that first week of post Ikoria release preliminary results. And then at that point, I will uh, add on, you know, return to this and we'll start looking at where Ikoria is showing up in the metagame and the effect that it's having on the decks that we see in the preliminaries. So let's get right to it. So there has been a little bit of an issue with the Magic Online website page that uh, publishes deck lists. The index page is not showing everything, and when you search by date, sometimes things appear and sometimes they don't. I'm not quite sure what's going on there, so we didn't quite get the full boat of preliminary results this past week, but we did get a decent amount of data. And so, uh, you know, it is what it is. The, their website isn't the most reliable thing on the planet, as I'm sure you're aware. Uh, for Pioneer, we had 21 decks this week, 19 last week, I think it was 22 the week before that, so we're hovering around the 20 range. Three of them were new. Uh, one of them, I think, was a little bit of a streamline of a deck we'd seen in the past. And again, all the turns at the bottom. Uh, the top decks are always appearing. And of the 21 decks we saw this week, 14 have appeared every single week I've done this. So there is a core of decks that are part of the metagame and then everything else is orbiting around that and we'll take a look at that at the end here uh, for modern there were only three panera preliminaries that got posted but they were big there were a lot of decks in both in two of the three uh, much larger than normal so we saw 44 different decks over over those three results uh, the uh, totals have been hovering in the low to mid 40s uh, for the preliminary results by week. So that, that's a good, broad metagame. Uh, five of the decks we saw this week were new. Thirteen of them were things we'd seen before that came back. And uh, this is actually inaccurate. It's 15. Uh, 15 decks have appeared in all five weeks. And uh, yeah, we'll take a look at those as well. They, they are the decks you would expect there to be for the most part. All right, Pioneer. Uh, Demir Inverter back on top uh, after briefly falling below Mono White Devotion, which fell down a couple of slots this week. Sultai Delirium did have a very good week this week. And uh, this these three have become the top of the metagame. Uh, Mono Black Aggro right behind. Bant Spirits just right on its tail. Uh, it did get a 5-0 result. Is it in Soul had a good week? Some good results there. I'm not seeing the four-color list show up as much. It's pretty much all the is it and is it version of the deck. And Mono Red Aggro then. Uh, oddly enough, Mono Red Aggro has been in the number seven slot three consecutive weeks. Uh, other decks have moved up and around it and whatnot, but it's stayed in that slot three weeks in a row. Page two, uh, a lot of the things you would expect to see. Lotus Breach, Gruel Aggro, Mono Green Walkers. The Hardened Scales deck is has definitely solidified its spot in the uh, second tier of the metagame. Five color Niv, Golgari Stompy, and the mostly green but Simic Ramp deck. Some of the two ofs, uh, a blue-red Prowess deck showed up that was kind of interesting. A couple of different people played it, and uh, that was new. Have not seen that. And a black-red mid-range deck, uh, Croxa based. Uh, that was That was a new one I had not seen. And then the Jeskai Fires deck that... Uh, it's Jeskai in the main deck. It showed up in one of the listings on MTG Goldfish as Wooburg because it did have 
white and black cards in the side I'm sorry black and green cards in the sideboard like casualties of war uh, etc um, but it is it is a Jeskai deck it is full Jeskai in the main deck and then the one ofs we saw this week uh, the Orzov Auras deck was back blue white control Demir control and the Simic Deep Fiend deck uh, was new but it's a streamlined version I think of the um, the Teamer Deep Fiend deck we saw a few weeks ago. Same same basic idea. And then decks we saw last week that didn't return were Merfolk, Blue White Spirits, and White Weenie. Let's go to Modern. So Burn was on top this week. Uh, the top two decks swapped, Burn and Gruel Monsters. Uh, but that is the top of your metagame right now. It's looking to be a uh, rather aggressive top of the metagame, but then right below it is a whole bunch of slower stuff. Uh, we've got Eurosa, which is, and Five Color Niv, which are probably the two top mid range decks of the format right now. You could argue Five Color Niv is a control deck. It's it's on that on that edge. Bant Snow Control, Bant Snow Blade is gone, so nobody playing Bant Snow is is posting results with Stoneforge Mystic in their deck. That deck is pretty much out of the metagame. Amulet Titan, uh, bring it, you know, popping in right here, showing solid results. No five O's, but good good results regardless. Eldrazi Tron back after dipping quite a bit last week. Uh, it's back on on the top page, and then Infect, just hanging around as it does. The tier two, the second page here, we've got Titan Field, uh, the second most popular. Uh, Titan deck. This is the one that does not have Scape Shift in it. Tron, right there. Dropped a little bit this week. Uh, was it two or three weeks ago it was at the top? Dredge, Jund. Jund has fallen off two weeks in a row after posting a number one. I guess people have moved over to Eurosa for their mid-range. Mardu Pyromancer. I, I renamed this. I had called it Mardu Pyro Blade last week because I thought the Stoneforge Mystic inclusion was kind of a different archetype but it's not it's just a uh, it's the same mardu pyromancer deck they've just adopted that card in the uh, main deck now ad nauseum came back after disappearing last week humans are around but they dropped quite a bit after a strong showing last week and slivers was back uh, that has popped up a bit lately it we saw it a couple weeks ago disappeared uh, came back in three different, I think three different players were playing it. Some of our two ofs that came back were Mono Red Blitz, Eldrazi and Taxes, and Grixis Wurza. Uh, two ofs we didn't see last week that we'd seen in the past were Neobrand, which I believe also won the PTQ, the Moto PTQ over the weekend. Four Color Snow Control, Electro Balance, and Jeskai Sahili. And yeah, that is the traditional Jeskai Sahili deck that had popped up right after Sahili of Rai was printed. Or, sorry, Fell at Our Guardian, I guess, was the, the more recent of the two. Uh, repeats that were one-ofs were Storm, Artifact Breach, Blue-White Control, Naya Stoneblade, the Black-Red Unearth deck, Naya Zoo, Sultai Mill, Titan Shift down here, still around, uh, and The Rock, as it always is. Decks we hadn't seen last week but came back were Demir Wurza, not the Sultai version. Bring to Light Scape Shift, Mono Red Prowess, the Devoted Company deck. This this one had uh, Heliod in it, if I recall. Hollow One, Blue Moon, and Teamer Snow. And then finally some new decks, sort of. Uh, at least new to the preliminary results since I've been doing this. Were Red Green Eldrazi, and this was a little bit of a different one. It was more aggressive than the typical red green eldrazi deck we saw what was it a year and a half ago it kind of made a splash at a grand prix uh, this one seemed to be a little more aggressive than that simic reclamation black green uh Yogmoth, the deck aaron barich popularized uh, with her win at a star city event true ponza not the gruel mid-range deck we've been seeing that's running three pillage this one was the real ponza deck it was also running uh it was either Stone Rain or Molten Rain as well in the main deck. Uh, yeah, the, the, that was Ponza. And then Blue White Spirits. And it floored me when I realized 
Okay, Blue-White Spirits is not a new deck. This is the first Spirits deck that's appeared in Modern in the preliminary results since I've been doing this. And for five weeks of results, that really surprises me. Spirits has been a mainstay in, in Pioneer, but in Modern it has effectively disappeared out of the metagame. Uh, decks that disappeared this week. Bogles, for the first time. Five color elementals, Crabvine, the Bant Snowblade deck, like I mentioned before. There were no Death Shadow decks in the preliminary results this week. None of the four builds made it. And then some of the spicier decks that uh, had shown up last week that didn't make it back were the Hate Bears, the Esper Inverter deck. I really hope that doesn't infect Modern. Uh, Dice Factory Elves, the Boros Humans deck, which I still want to try. That looked like fun. Smallpox and the uh, Jeskai Stoneblade deck that showed up. So one thing I want to look at now are the decks that have appeared every week. And I, I also sorted them by their average finish each week. So we get kind of a feel for where the metagame got to before Ikoria hits. And it'll be interesting to come back to this in, say, a month and a half two months and see where we're at and compare. So it, that, that'll that be an interesting exercise when we get to that point. So no surprise here, Demir Inverter, Mono White Devotion up at the top and separated a bit from the next decks. Then we've got a clump here, which is Sultai Delirium, Bant Spirits, and Mono Red. Those are kind of your second level deck. Mono Green Walkers and Mono Black Aggro. Lotus Breach and Is It in Soul, I would kind of lump those together. Five Color Niv and Golgari Stompy right behind. Then Gruel Aggro, uh, Blue White Control, and Simic Ramp. Uh, all of those showed up at least once in every week's worth of preliminary results. And this feels like a really good snapshot of what Pioneer is about. We've got some aggro decks, we've got some control decks, we've got some combo decks, we've got a ramp deck, a big mana style deck, uh, we've got mid-range. There's pretty much everything in here that you could want. It, it, other than Demir Inverter being pretty dominant, it feels like a good metagame. And I don't know what would happen if Demir Inverter went away. I'm not quite sure where the format would go after that, but we've got Ikoria coming, so that's a whole nother set of input to deal with. So let's look at Modern. And these... Note, I want you to notice something here first. Demir, Inverter, Mono White, and Devotion have averages of two or less. Our, our lowest averages here are over five. So... The top of the metagame in Modern has churned a lot. And all these decks have shown, have had their day in the sun. The one that I found was interesting that came up at the top of the list here is Eurosa. It's just been steadily right around the 3, 4, 5, I think it had one week down to 10. But it's been steadily in that right near the top range, but never really flashy. It's just solid. And it's kind of the the top mid-range deck of the format. Uh, then we've got, with it, at the same level, we've got the two variants on Tron that see the most play. Uh, right behind that's Jund. And Jund is Jund, right? It is it is the bedrock uh, deck of the format, along with Burn. I think these two are probably... I mean, it's Thought Season, it's Lightning Bolt, right? And that's that's modern, in a nutshell. Uh, then Amulet Titan right behind. Humans right behind that. And, and if you look at that left column there, with the possible exception of Eurosa being newer because of Uro, that's a long-standing modern format. And we talk about how, you know, the new decks have changed modern it's hard to recognize modern over what it was and things like that but that left column there if you had told me two years ago that 
this would be the top of modern, I don't think people would be too surprised. Okay, yeah, they don't know what this Erosa thing is because both the two main cards in that deck are less than a year old. But other than that, that's a consistent performance out of these top decks here. So modern does reward you for knowing your deck. Uh, the second column over here, we've got Mono Red Blitz, which has been, you know, a, a key performer here in the format. Kind of the lower end of the clock, almost. Dredge, uh, the Gruel Monsters deck we've been seeing lately, the the Ponza Light, or whatever we're calling it. Uh, in fact, the Artifact Breach deck, that one's, you know, consistent performer. Titan Field, Storm, of course, and then our third Primeval Titan deck here, Titan Shift. So, you know, three different Titan decks in the list here. They would probably all sum up to something close to Urosa, maybe a little higher. Uh, so, Primetime has definitely been the number one creature in the format, uh, to be sure. But, yeah, this is, uh, this is where we're at right now with the formats. And... With Akoria coming, it'll be interesting to see how things change, what makes an actual impact and a lasting impact in the formats. So, uh, yeah, keep up. We'll, uh, we'll see what's happening. Uh, I do appreciate your watching. If you enjoy what I'm doing here, do please like and subscribe. Hit that bell to know when my next video comes out. And uh, it's been a journey. Let's see what Akoria brings for us. Stay safe out there, and we will talk to you the next time there is a Pioneer or Modern League dump. Thanks a bunch. Bye-bye.